Hey everybody, it's uh, Jeff Noyes here from Oceanside Airbrush again. And um, today we're going to paint, well I'm going to paint and you're going to watch I guess, but you could do it too, or like something like this. Um, today I want to paint this, I'm just going to tilt the camera thing so I can see if it's uh, centered up okay. Um, I printed this off on, on my computer printer, I didn't do a great job as you can see there's a bunch of lines in it. But you know, I'm just going to cut this and, and use it as an airbrush stencil just to get the placement of the Mustang. Um, now as you can see, it's it's uh, a, a, a perfect size. I blew it up as big as I could on 8.5 by 11 paper. It's a perfect size to fit on this canvas, but I wanted a cool background other than just those trees. So I kind of made a collage. I just... Uh, quickly photoshopped, well not photoshopped another program but something like photoshop I just uh, made a collage and put together what I really want to have even though this is too small I don't have a printer big enough to to blow this up so what I did is I cropped this Mustang out and then I I just made a collage I just pasted it on top of a, another image with the mountain background on route 66 United States. I figure it's a US built car, might as well build put it on a US road. And then I added the little Route 66 sign but it got cut off a little bit by my printer. Um, but that's okay because I'm just using this as a reference. This isn't, you know, like it, you can see it's too small to uh, cover the whole canvas so it's just going to be the idea. But what I like to do is uh, get the idea from here and then um, this Mustang is actually uh, a little better printed because this one's just I roughly cropped it out so it's kind of square in a few spots this is a this is the good copy so I want to use this and kind of just find the placement and then I can use this as a reference and try to just pencil in uh, the mountains and and sunset and and the sign kind of where I want it before I start airbrushing so this is just kind of like the pre steps now this is a really cool thing I got from Elmer's. I use their uh, adhesive spray a lot um, and you can use adhesive spray on these canvases just fine but I don't want to just um, spray something and stick it on there just to find placement. So I got this cool new tool. It's called the uh, the Elmer's uh, Spot Stamper, Adhesive Spot Stamper. I'm going to try to get these on our website uh, available. It's really cool. You just press this end here against your work and it stamps out a little you can see there's a tape in there it stamps out a little round clear disc of, of double sticky side and it's perfect for just hanging stuff really fast or even putting stencils on your work even in curved areas this thing is awesome you just stamp it and stick it down around the corner if, if you got a spot that's sticking up or or uh, you could do the whole stencil with this even. This stuff peels off really well. It's like you just, it's kind of rubbery little disc, so you just pull it off and it comes off. You can even get it off the paper, so it comes off the canvas even easier. Okay, so that's what's nice about it, because once you stamp your paper, you can stick it on the canvas and there's like no worry of it leaving anything on the canvas. Oops, speaking of leaving something on the canvas, I just, uh, I just touched the canvas with a dirty glove <laughs> and made a mark on it. That's okay though, because I'm going to paint over this spot. I'm not worried about it, but watch out for that, folks. Okay, so I'm going to try to get the placement of the Mustang uh, where I want it. So I'm going to use my stamper. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this thing over backwards. And uh, I'm just going to gently use the edge of the um, canvas here, because it's a wood frame. And I'm just going to press this thing in and uh, that's it okay oh uh, maybe I'm out of this oh no I need to uh, press it harder so I put it on the table and did it there you go leaves a little disc I don't know if you can see that on there little tiny kind of sticky disc thing and I want this to sit right about there pretty much centered but not quite off to one side a little bit and I'm just going to touch my sticky spot and you'll see it hangs nice see it hangs nice and square and there's no worry about it falling this thing is awesome 
So now I've got my placement on my Mustang. Um, now I can look at my reference that I made the collage with the mountains and I can kind of get an idea, you know, because this is too small for the size of the Mustang, the mountains need to be, you know, maybe a little further back and a little taller and the sunset needs to be further back and the road might need to be a little longer. You know, I need to expand it a little bit because I don't have this blown up so I gotta like blow it up in my mind kind of thing and draw around this Mustang. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a regular pencil to start out uh, as soon as I find my regular pencil. Oh, I don't have my regular pencil. There it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a regular lead pencil. Looks like my pencil needs a good sharpening. Oh no, it's still working. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna use a regular, uh, I forget what lead pencil this is, but it's just a cheap pencil. And then I have Stabilo pencils. Um, they're a little darker, like this black one I'm gonna use, maybe, just to, if I need to see something a little better. And then some of this stuff I'm gonna stencil and some of it I'm going to freehand. But that's right about where I want the Mustang. I'm just standing back here looking at it. It looks like it's in a perfect spot. I'm gonna, so obviously the, the line of the road is going to go... I want the line of the road to go right past its back bumper. Okay, so the road is going to go right past it here and off into the sunset. Okay, so I have to kind of pick my vector point. What is a vector point? Uh, if you have a vanishing point uh, that would be your vector point. So, as you can see in my collage here, I'll hold it a little closer, the road, the lines on the road are really wide at the front. This is what gives, makes it look 3D. Okay, you gotta watch how this how stuff looks really 3D. You can pay attention to this stuff so your work looks more 3D. Okay, so in the real world, the lines go on this side of the car, and the yellow lines just behind the car, and the other white line is way over here. Okay, I'm trying to point backwards and look at the camera at the same time. Okay, so the other white line is right there. Okay, and um, this white line is over here. But if you notice, <clears throat> back into the sunset, they go together into a point. Okay, in fact, if you follow them along, right where the sunset meets the horizon line, they meet, okay, like a little dot right there, okay? In fact, all the lines, the yellow line, the white line, this line, uh, the mountain line, and this extra, the, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a hill coming down here behind the sign I put in, and then there's just a little hump, maybe it's some trees, it's hard to say, it's just a little bushy area, and that they all lead to that one dot. So that is your vanishing point. Or your vector point okay so what you have to do when you're trying to figure this stuff out is figure out where's your vanishing point first okay that's the first thing you want to do because everything else leads to the vector point okay or to the um, vanishing point so judging from perspective I want the mountains to go halfway between the top of the picture and the car roof okay right about half right about here and then the second mountain over here I want it to almost touch the top of the, the picture but I want a little bit of blue sky in there okay and the sunset I want that to be as big as it needs to be in comparison to the mountains we're gonna make so it's all going to be in perspective. So what I want is this top piece here. I got the camera as high as I can go on the tripod, so I don't know if you can see the very top here, but I'm going to try to maybe if I move the camera back just in a couple more inches, then you can see the top a little better. Okay, so there we go. All right, so now you can see up here a little better. Alright, so up here, I need this to be, you know, it doesn't have to be an exact measurement, but I need a little bit of space in here for that blue sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a really, really light line. So light. 
okay just to reference uh, a height kind of thing okay and then um, I'm gonna look at where I need the two mountains roughly in comparison to this car okay so one mountain goes pretty much on the s it, here's how to you know like gauge things if you look you'll notice this hill goes almost on the same slant as the back of the car and it's almost right above it okay so right at the back window of the car above it I need to start that mountain off so right about there okay so right about there now I might have to uh, you know the papers in the way so I'm just going to draw on the paper okay so right about there I need to start that mountain right on the corner so I don't need to draw on the paper though I'm just going to start here and I'm, and I want to just draw a little line where I want that slant that's going to match the roof here kind of and it doesn't have to be exact we're going to airbrush all this later this is just to get spatial placement okay to get the perspective of or the uh, um, you know you have to get the um, what's the word I'm looking for the, the, the everything has to be the right size in comparison to each other you can't have a giant car and these tiny little roads and mountains you gotta have everything the right size so I'm just trying to get the placement first and you know I can already see that I want that line to be a little more slanted so I'm just gonna slant it a bit more make it a little darker again this doesn't matter we're going to change all of this with the paint so I'm just putting in some really light lines doesn't doesn't matter if they're accurate or not okay and then I need two humps I need one right about here a little pointy one and then a slant and a little hump and it doesn't have to be exact it's art right it doesn't have to be perfect Nobody's going to know that you used this reference photo in the first place. Okay, and then it's going to draw down here. And then this one, um, remember we said we wanted about half, so somewhere in here-ish, I need to have this second hump. So it has to go back up first, and it has to come over here. So I, th and the road line is going to go straight, right, into the vanishing point. So now we know our vanishing point, um, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that when we were doing it that I want it up here right so all I have to do is kind of gauge where it's going to be now so I want this line to go right past the back bumper okay so it's going to go right about and, it, and as you can see in the reference photo it's not straight with the edge of the paper it's tilted that way a little bit okay like that so if I do that with my pencil and kind of just point that way past the back bumper I can kind of get an idea where that vector point is going to be, okay? And I want it to be down right around where the mountain um, ends, okay? So now we know kind of where the mountains are going to be. I didn't finish drawing them yet because I want to finish the vector point thing here first, okay? So it's going to go right about like that, and it has to come up to about there. So my vanishing point has to be around... I'll make it a little higher, right around there. So I'm just going to put a little dot there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Probably not. I don't want to do it any darker though. So you'll just have to believe me that I put a dot there. Okay, so that's my vanishing point or my vector point. Is it perfect? I don't know. I'm going to double check things here a little bit. Um, I want this line to go over the back of, or right through behind the car and um, about halfway through the windshield there and carry on so yeah that's pretty close yeah it doesn't have to be perfect and I could always move the car up a, a couple of hairs if I have to but I really like where the car is right now so I don't want to move it I can always move my dot and then just you know move my line over here a bit so either way I'm going to make this work and then this line, um, I think I had my pencil a little bit too much of an angle. I wanted a little straighter. 
It's going to have to be, but don't forget we're blowing it up. So I think it's going to have to be just a little past the bumper. Right here it goes under the bumper, the back bumper, the line. But I think it's going to have to just maybe just go right past the back of the bumper. I don't know, maybe I can just get it under there. If I go straight up, oop, got to be careful not to move the car now. I only got it hanging by one little thing. Um, okay, so if I go right up past the back bumper or just under it, then my dot would just be over just a little bit more. And if I came this way with the other white line, depending on what angle I go, it really depends on the angle I go at. I, I gotta get the angle just right. So another good thing to look at is how does it compare to the car? Um, it's really parallel with the hood. So wherever your my hood is pointing, I should have my line pretty similar. So the line is gonna go right there. And I can go right about there. So if it's going that way, it's gonna it's gonna be right there. It's it's whichever line I check, it comes up to about the same spot. So I'm just gonna lower it just a little bit more, and I'm just gonna leave both dots there for the moment because I might have to, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect yet. We're just getting a rough idea. Okay. So in speaking of rough ideas, um, you can do stuff like you know maybe. Um, yeah, see, I still don't like where that dot is, though, because it doesn't... <clears throat> I want my line to go under the bumper. So if my line's going this way just a little bit... I'm just using the edge of the paper here as a guide instead of my pencil because it's longer, and I, I'm getting a much better look at what I need to do here. See, now the dot uh, should be over here. So I'll just put another dot there. This, see, this works better. I should have used this in the first place. And, uh, you know, I have, I do have the right tools for the job. I'm just not using them. should be using this thing. Uh, this is a much better tool for the job. Do, do, do. Okay, so I want that pretty parallel. And I want it, oh, I guess I should go this way so I can see the car better. Um, Yeah, that looks pretty good. So if I go right over the hood, the same. It, oh, I moved the car now. Ah, be careful not to move stuff when you're just lining it up. Okay, so if we go there, yeah, that works. So if I come in here, I can still line it up with that dot that I just made. If I can line it up with that dot and make it parallel with the car. Although now it doesn't go through the window. I kind of want it to. I'm still going to, if I lower it just a bit more, the problem is is the paper's there. I might have to make my vanishing point where the paper is to get this right. If I do that, still not low enough. How about there? That looks pretty good. A little lower yet. See, this is why you want to check this stuff. Because you want to get everything. I've painted images and stuff, or I've painted pictures before and then been disappointed with my spatial placement or, or the uh, um, perspective of you know how everything's in in comparison to the size of each other sometimes you can you can really get something wrong and not notice right away and then when you look at it later you're like why did i make that tree so big or too small or why did i make that person's head bigger than their body or you know you got to you get better at it okay so looks like I need to make my vector point actually where the paper is, so I'll just uh, turn, pull up the paper a bit and put it right there. Okay, so I'm just going to not use these other ones. I don't know if this eraser is going to work. Yeah, it works. All right. And 
again, we're going to paint over all of this, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I got my points there, and then um, I don't really have this cut out yet, so I'm just going to reach under the paper here and put a tiny little dot where I got the front bumper, because that's where I can line it up with. Okay, so I'll just put it right there. Alright, so now I know where I had the front bumper of the car. Okay, so now I know my vanishing point is going to be right there. And look at that. That works perfectly with that slant of that car window we were talking about. If I drew that just a little longer into the mountain that I already have going. Okay, so cool. So that worked out perfectly. So now I just have to finish the mountain here. Now that I know where my vector point is. And obviously, see, this is why we spatially place things. I can find my good eraser here. Because um, if this is halfway, which it is about now, then this is too high. Alright, so I'm just going to take that down just a little bit. Fortunately, if you draw really, really, really light on these canvas, uh, um, stretched canvas units, pieces, whatever you want to call it, their uh, the race is pretty good. You can use your airbrush to uh, blow it off. Get those little rubbery guys out of there. Okay, so there we go. So now I need to move that down a bit because I wasn't happy with the height difference. Okay, so now um, I got my reference photo again here. See, the other one isn't much higher than this one, so. I didn't want it way up there. Now, of course, it doesn't really matter because uh, it's art and we can do what we want. Now, I want the, dip, the, the peak to, and then the dip to come down roughly where the corner of the windshield is. So I should start, you know, it's going to be bigger than the, don't forget we're making it bigger, right? So it's going to be bigger than the original, so it's going to have to move over a little tiny bit. So maybe with the hood scoop here. So I'm just trying to get that about right. And then it's going to go up again. And then a little hump. A little bit down. And then kind of there. So I wasn't off by too much. How's that? I went a little high again with this one. Still not happy with it. Try to get happy with your uh, heights and perspectives and stuff while you're doing this stage because this is this is easy you can just erase this and fix it nice and easy so I'll just put that little hump right there and then uh, oops is that right okay so it goes kind of straight and then there's a little hump and then it goes um, tiny peak. It actually goes that way a little bit. Not as much as I have it though. Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's art. You can do whatever you want. I just like to get this part as close as I can to my reference. So I have something good to work with. doesn't mean I'm going to do it exactly like that. Okay, and this one's too pointy. Need to take that off. Okay, and then I'm just gonna. There's actually a little step down there, and then it's rounded more on that side. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm happy with that. This could be a little more. Yeah, no, that's actually pretty good. Now that I look at it, it goes straight down to the vanishing point. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, okay? Now, my sunset, now that I know where the vanishing point is and the road is going to end. Okay, so, sorry about that, my uh, battery died. <clears throat> okay, so, um, where were we here? Um, I've got the mountains where I want them. Now, I know where the road is going to roughly be. It's going to come up past the car. 
and uh, I think I might just draw a really really light line now just to get that over with and it's got to go right to my vector point okay and it's got to go through the windshield a little bit and then be parallel roughly parallel with the car so I'll just draw a little line down here okay and that's roughly where my my lines can go that's pretty much perfect right there and then this side I want the highway line to go right under the back bumper of the car and it's almost straight but not perfect which is right about where it is so it's good looking good pretty happy with that Alright, so I'll just put a line down here. Gives me a reference where my road line is going to be. Okay? Now, there's one problem I see. The sunset, um, the line is where the vector point is. It's right there. But this mountain doesn't actually meet the vector point. So i got to move this over just a little bit. The mountain. I got it over too far. And now I've moved the car. Fortunately, I marked where the bumper goes, so should be fine. All right, so I just kind of bring this down straighter, like that, and then that way. Let's see if I got my bumper. Oh, actually, <laughs> there's a little line on the paper where the uh, road line I made meets up, and so is this one. Cool. Now I can get it really straight. Okay, cool. So now I know where the car goes. I've got my mountains coming down. They're not quite at the right angle, though. I might have to change this whole thing over here. And this is when you do this. Get it all right in pencil. I'm not going to erase this all the way yet, because I actually want to see where the old one was so I can redraw it. but I really want this perspective thing to be right. So I gotta go up a little quicker here and then bring it down sooner so that it's more of a steady slope into the yeah, same place but at a different slope. And that looks much better even though it's just rough you know but I can tell I got this too high compared to the slant of the hill so I'll just knock that down a little bit like that all right that's pretty good I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? I'm just trying to get the same qualities out of this that the original has. And this needs to be a little straighter here. And then a hump. And then a dip. And then over. Perfect. And then I'll just erase that over, over the top bit there. And uh, make my other lines that I left go away a little better. Oh, I knocked the paper off, but that's okay. I know where everything goes. And I'll get rid of these other old vector points. Okay, so now I know where everything's going to go. Okay? That's how you do it. That's how you blow up something and uh, figure out where it's all going to go. I got my bumper marked. I got the road lines marked. I got um, the vector point or the vanishing point marked. I've got my mountains roughed in where I want them. 
So there we go. I'll get all the rubber bits from my eraser off of there. So it's all nice and clean. And um, do, 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 do. And my car fell down, so I'll put my car back up. And I'll try to line things up here as good as I can. to go. Did I get it right? Looks good to me. Everything lines up. Perfect. Okay, so I just got the one little sticky on there just from this thing. Uh, so it's not on there really well. Okay, so now I'm just holding, I'm just stepping back and looking at my reference and seeing how does this look. Okay, I can see one thing I don't like. Just when I stood back, right away what stood out to me is this hill is too steep. This one and this one are supposed to be the same grade. So what I can do is just knock this back a little bit and then just make this part shorter because uh, as soon as I step back that, that really stands out. I don't like it. So I'm going to get rid of all of that. I'm not going to erase it all the way yet. I'm just going to take it down mostly. I want to see where the old one is while I draw the new one. So I want to slant this back a little bit more and then I want it to peak and then come back this way. Not much of a change, but every little subtle thing matters. That looks pretty good. I like that much better. Except, you know, the hump could be a little higher, but I'll just paint that higher. I'm, I actually think that's pretty really close. I think that's really close actually. If I hold it underneath everything looks pretty much where it should be. That's good. I like that. And then I'm looking at my collage here and the, and the highway line is the white line it's supposed to go right past the hood of the car back an inch or two and it's supposed to go right through the windshield. Now it does go through the windshield it goes a little higher than my reference collage. But that's okay because we're blowing it up so it ha everything has to be moved out just a little bit. Just like this line here it tucks right past the wheel and touches the bumper. I tried to emulate that as much as possible because I really want that bumper to be just a hair over the white line. The reason for that is it's going to give it way more 3D look. So if I move the line over a bit, it'll still look cool, but I just want I want the line to ev even just barely clip. See, it's just going to clip that back of that bumper. And I'm going to paint it on that side of the line. So it's just going to nick it. But if I do that, it'll make it look more 3D. Okay? And then um, the Route 66 sign. Okay, first I need to figure out where is my uh, vector point. Okay, and then from there I've got a little hump uh, that goes from the line over to the beginning of the mountain. So there's another mountain about here, and it's about the same slant as that one. Okay, so around there I have to go this way with the mountain. And then uh, the Route 66 sign I put in there, I didn't even put in the post yet, but it's going to, you know, the road lines here and then the gravel of the side of the road is going to be roughly there. And then there's some, a little bit of gravel right there. So the Route 66 sign has to be, um, that's over too far there, and then the gravel. So the Route 66 sign should be right somewhere around here, I guess. And it looks like it should just clip the top of the, the hill a bit. Um, and the sunset is going to go 
about that high. So I'll just kind of draw um, an arch for the sunset. Rough edge. And then the, the sign is going to go right about there. Okay, and then that way I can kind of just, um, if I put a post on it, just roughly, then I can rough in the grass that will go right behind it and off into the vector point. Oh, so it's got to go to the end of there, so it's got to go a little more on this angle. See, this is why you want to do this, because all your angles matter. The angle of the grass. Like if you look, if the road's going like this, and all of a sudden the grass is like this, it just ruins the whole perspective. So you have to get this stuff right. You can just use the edge of your paper to just kind of roughly place stuff. Now the, the gravel goes from that ve same vector point and a little wider. So it's going to go kind of like um, I don't know, about like that, I guess. Kind of there. Doesn't have to be straight. We're just putting down perspective lines. We're spatially placing everything. Okay, and then the edge of the pavement goes between. Okay, uh, my battery died on the camera there, so uh, well, while I was getting my uh, power pack to plug it in with, I uh, went ahead and cut out the car so I didn't have the paper around it. Um, so make sure you keep all your pieces though, you want to cut, you want to keep the negative piece too, okay, and uh, you know I got the all this cut out so I can do the nice outline of the car if I need to, uh, but right now I'm just checking everything for spatial placement, make sure I did a good job here really hard to see on the camera. I don't even know if you can see any of those lines. Um, but right here is the the, the road line. Um, let's see if I can get in a little closer here with the camera. Maybe you'll be able to see some of these lines a little better. I don't know, it's pretty dark still. Or it's pretty light a bit. Um, but right here I've got uh, the line going up from the bottom um, for the uh, road line in my reference photo. Okay, so that's going to be the road uh, road line right there. Okay, going behind the car. So I got that right here, and I don't really have it mapped all the way across yet. Now that I have the car paper cut out of the way and just the car here I could go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to take a pencil and do a really really light line from my original line all the way up right behind the car bumper. Okay that's going to be my one highway line there and then I've got the other ones I, I don't know if you can see them on the camera um, but I, I drew in um, some more of the reference lines there's a road road line here. Then there's a, a gravel line here. Then there's a uh, kind of a brush line here. And then there's another line where the mountains kind of fade off into the or the field fades into the mountains. Okay, so I drew that line here, the road line, and then the gravel line and the bush line just roughly where they're going to go, not perfect. And then further up, I drew the line where the mountains should kind of bend. I didn't do it perfect. Um, none of those lines have to be straight except the road line. So the road line, I'm just going to extend it here all the way from my vanishing point or my vector point. And I'm just going to lightly draw it right in behind the car as we had planned. 
and then uh, I'm just going to continue this right off the edge of the artwork. Okay, so that's it, folks. I think we got everything where we need it to be. Um, you know, I could carry on these lines here, but um, they don't have to be straight, and I kind of want them to. Um, gradually fade off into this vector point. Um, I don't know, maybe if I uh, Okay, so going in a little closer here, you can see things a little better. Um, I've got the uh, the road line going up behind the car bumper just a little bit and up to my vanishing point. The other road line goes straight behind the car through the windshield and off the edge of the artwork. These will be the gravel and brush lines. This will be the mountain ending line. Again, this should kind of fade off. So I'm just kind of sketch that in there lightly. Okay, and then I got the mountain tops here, roughly where I want them to go, and they go down to here, and then uh, fade off as the middle of the road is our vector point or vanishing point and there's going to be some brushes in here didn't draw those in yet but I can just draw a line a little curved line there's going to be a little bit of brush there um, it's going to be the side of the road here then there's going to be gravel here it's going to be the um, route 66 sign here with the mountain just in behind it there Okay, and then that's it. The rest is going to be a uh, blue sky up here, according to our reference picture. It's going to be blue sky that fades into this orange glowing sunset. Okay, and then we got the Route 66 sign off to the side there. Um, on my reference, it's cut off the page here, but on my actual painting, I'm going to have the whole sign there because I've got a little, like I said, this is smaller than the canvas, so i got a lot more room to work with. So I think I did a pretty good job getting all my spatial placement, or spatial placement correct, and getting all the lines where they need to be uh, to give me some direction when I go to start painting this stuff. Okay, so that's it. All I have to do now is uh, mark out where the car is going to go. Um, I'm going to just put some uh, marks around it. Maybe start with the airbrush and just lightly, lightly dust around it. Or I might use the negative actually and put the negative over it and then just lightly dust where the car is going to go with, um, I don't know, a really light light gray or something just something that'll barely show up because um, there is some you know when I get into the color version of the car here if you look at the color version of the car there's some white and gray which is um, a lot brighter than the road okay so um, I might just do a light light grayish color over the whole car, do the negative like this, and then put the negative on there and spray through the negative just to get the shape of the car. Or maybe I'll just dust around the positive of the car here. It doesn't really matter uh, because you know I'm gonna be painting all around here, so it doesn't matter if I go around the edges of it. 
or if I do the negative it doesn't really matter as long as I know exactly where the car is even just having the piece of paper stuck here with my Elmer's stamper uh, thing just got two little stamps on the back of it um, you know I could just leave the pap paper there and start painting the rest and then do the car when I want to when I want to do it up front here so um, normally you want to try to get placement of things and you know you can st it's all about and remember it's art it's a matter of preference so you can do whatever you want you could paint the car first and then mask it with some frisket or something and then go ahead and paint the rest of ev everything else behind it in this case I think I'm gonna start painting everything else first and then uh, do the car last I think um, just to just the way I, the way this is laid out, it's just the way I think I want to do it. I want the car to be really up front. I could paint it and get it really crisp, and then and then mask it with some frisket. Um, but I think I'll just go ahead and paint the rest of it. So I'm gonna paint everything else around it first, and then even maybe do the road underneath it kind of thing, and then put the car back on top and do the car that way. Um, so anyway, I hope this video helped you understand spatial placement and uh, perspective. Um, everything has to be the right size in comparison to, to you know, the other things in the image. So when you're trying to make something this small fit on a big square, and also this is more rectangle too, uh, the canvas is very much square, very square, so uh, everything's a little taller, so basically I just moved the car up so it's not as close to the bottom of the page, that's why it's got more space here, and then I've got more detail off to the sides, that's why the sign is cut off here, but it will be on the canvas right there, and put it right there. And then the mountains, I just had a little more room to work with and a little more sky. Just a tiny bit more sky to work with. Alright, so that's how I made it all fit. Um, but that's, uh, that's how you figure out your spatial placement and your perspective and sizes and everything. And then, of course, your eye is going to be the best. Just stand back and look at it. I know it's really hard to see those pencil lines uh, from on this camera but if you're standing back here looking everything looks right to me the size of the road looks right the size of the mountains look right the size of the sign looks correct um, everything looks the right size so I always like to wait to um, you know walk away from it and come back later and take another fresh look at it before you start painting because you'll you might notice something that you didn't notice now okay so that's it folks, that's how you do spatial placement and uh, perspective to get everything in place when you go to do a larger portrait or artwork or, or something of this nature on canvas. Okay, um, so I'm just going to dust around that Mustang or uh, use the negative and then I'll know where it is. I'm going to paint the rest of the picture first and then when it gets down to the Mustang I'm going to uh, just go for my reference photo that I have up there, the good print, which is nice and clear and high quality. I'm just going to, you know, I'll just move that down to the corner of my, I'll, I'll probably stick it right there kind of thing, and then I can paint the car by looking at this car and painting with my airbrush to get everything where I want it. So I'm just going to dust around this or do the negative and then with my pencil I might just mark a few spots where things need to be. Um, you know, you can even cut the stencil, you could cut the stencil in spots and then just lift, lift the corner of the cut spot up and spray underneath it so you can find out where the grill is supposed to be and stuff. You can do that. There's all sorts of ways to do it. Um, but that's it for this video. I'm just showing you how to get everything in perspective and how to do spatial placement and get ready uh, and prepared to, to do a, an artwork like this. So that those are the steps you need to take. 
uh, this video is not so much about doing the painting as getting prepared and getting your perspective and uh, um, all of that correct, your spatial placement correct. Okay? So that's how you do it, or at least how I do it anyway, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's how most professional artists would tell you to do the same, especially with your vanishing points and your vector points. Okay? So that's how you do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video will be uh, a tutorial on actually painting this. So um, please subscribe um, so you get a notification when I upload the next tutorial. And if you click on the link to subscribe after, you will also be able to click on the link that goes to the next tutorial. Um, and this for this I'll be painting, for the next one I'll be painting this uh, this image here that we've laid out. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget folks, if you're not painting for an hour a day, you're getting worse, not better.